I, I started to kind of think about what can I do? And I started to arrive at the idea that journalism is really a lot about a kind of illusion of neutrality, you know, as opposed to just mm-hmm. actual neutrality. Well, right. Because like, don't you think that there is no actual neutrality? Like, I think that you can get pretty close. Yeah. I think you can get to like 93% neutrality, but you have to kind of be transparent about like, look, this is not neutral. And for me to present it as that is asking you to cultivate a higher degree of trust in me than is fair. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's why I periodically should say like, look, I'm not claiming this is the truth. This truth is this show's truth is the thoughts of some bimbo. So, you know, I think it's really important to be informed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that being informed, like part of your role is you're going to hear stuff that maybe there's contradictions, there's omissions, there's, you know, there's all kinds of things happening. And like partially your job is to judge and to try to make judgments about what is the best version of the story best being, you know, accuracy is important. But at the same time, like, I feel a lot of times we were like, oh, curiosity, that's the reporter's toolbox. You know, what about compassion? You know, I think compassion Mm -hmm. also has to be part of it, too. And what's at stake, not just for the people in the story, but in you as the storyteller, I think recognizing that actually will probably get you closer to the thing that journalism calls neutrality than just this idea that anything that isn't universal is a problem. Right. And like, not to make everything about Tanya Harding, but like, what <laughs> if everything is about Tanya Harding? And mm-hmm. like, I feel like the, the sort of mainstream media frenzies of the 90s were so interesting because it was like respectable mainstream media could report on a big topic by being like, all these tabloids are reporting on this topic. <laughs> right. We're well, not reporting on the topic. We're reporting on the tabloids reporting on the well, topic. I think this still happens to some degree with social media, but you know. Oh, of course. Yeah. The thing about Sinead, and I think this is covered well in Catherine mm-hmm. Ferguson's documentary, Nothing Compares, which is now, you know, streaming on Showtime. You know, Sinead was coming out of Ireland at a certain time, you know, it was like a Catholic theocracy Mm. and her mother was very, very devout and and abusive, like horrifically abusive. And divorce wasn't legal, but her parents separated when she was about seven or eight. Mm -hmm. And her father spent years and eventually was awarded custody of the children, which is also, you know, very, was very, very rare and still probably Mm -hmm. is. But, you know, by that point, you know, she had endured a lot of hardship and, um, she was like, you know, pickpocketing people and shoplifting and acting out in all kinds of ways. And, you know, eventually was sort of little Sinead O'Connor saying, you've got to pick a pocket or two. <laughs> yeah, a bit like that. Sent off to a Dickensian, you know, kind of Catholic girls school where mm-hmm. an interesting thing happened, which was she um, had this nun called Sister Margaret, who really saw in her like, wow, you know, she needs an emotional outlet. And she really loved her, not in spite of the fact that she was rebellious, but because she was rebellious. And she bought Sinead her first guitar and a book of Bob Dylan songs, which I'm going to get to in a second, because that's going to be an important part Mm -hmm. of the story. And, you know, even like this leather jacket she wanted from this sort of punk rock shop in Dublin. Mm -hmm. And what she was really doing is like giving her a chance to kind of have a self-esteem, you know, an identity. Yeah. And that that makes me wonder, like, as someone who identified, you know, from a young age as a mu- as a musician yourself, like, I wonder about the the sense of identity that music can give you as, as a teenager, kind of, because like, right, you're born and you grow up in a family and you grow up in a culture. And it feels like music is one of the first things that you can turn to that's like, there are actually other, there are whole other worlds out there for you. Yeah. 